So since everybody thinks I'm a LARPer, why not go full LARP retard and uh, go ahead and uh, Gucci this thing out. Good morning guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. It's 4 a.m., I'm gonna keep this one quick. Uh, this is gonna be a travel video. I'm out here in uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and uh, it's four o'clock in the morning waiting for a flight to board at 425 and I'm headed over to Huntsville, Alabama for the Huntsville Ham Fest and um, we're gonna do some combo on this trip. Uh, no issues with TSA this morning. Brought the Yesu VX6R and also a new to me HF radio that's ultra light and not in my character and that is the true SDX so stick around for lots of combo. I've got targeted plans operating in a new operating environment so we'll see how that goes. Catch you guys later. Alright guys, so it's the following morning, I'm at the hotel room and I just want to walk you through some of my kit. Like I said, I went ultra lightweight on this one. So the first piece of kit here is my Everyday Carry VX6R. I am running it with the uh, DigiRig Lite and also with the VX6 cable. So this is the primary interface that uh, I'm using for things like APRS, uh, primarily using the mail gateway that I've shown in uh, an earlier video last month and also a uh, Winlink on Android. Last night we went to dinner and I tried to hit a Winlink VHF packet station about nine miles from our location. It didn't work. I'm sure I'll figure it out uh, before we leave. So for HF, I do plan on trying to make a contact with my normal group out in the Southwest. So on the airplane actually yesterday while I was flying, uh, I revisited a project that I took to maybe like 70% completion a few years ago and that was doing offline Voice of America capture and analysis um, development of the vocap program. And I basically was able to drop a pin in Huntsville completely offline, and then also plot out the uh, short path prediction uh, to uh, Henderson, Nevada, and also to Phoenix. And it looks like the time for that window is between, opens up at 2300 UTC, and it's actually going to close here in less than two hours at 1400 UTC. So to make that happen, I'm going to try to use a radio that is very new to me. I've never done it before. Uh, so it's going to be a great test. And that is, like I said, the true SDX. So it's in um, one of my little gear pouches here. And then I paired with it my NFED half wave, uh, mostly because of the size. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so first up, we've got the NFED half wave. And this is Tim N9 SAVs. And uh, for th those of you guys who don't know, the reason why I like traveling with these is because you only need one support, so super tiny and compact. This does, I believe, 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters. So we're gonna try this outside of the hotel room, a little bit of RG316, and just a little bit of micro paracord. Here's the uh, kit for the True SDX. Uh, you guys saw that I had a fail video not too long ago, so I decided to tag everything here. And this is in one of my antenna pouches. So with five watts, we're probably looking at digital. So I'm using the True SDX. Again, I'm not using the USB interface on the True SDX, mostly because I've standardized on the DigiRig for everything. And really all you need for it is the cables for it. So I've got the audio cables for the True SDX. Small gear pouch, but we'll talk about this one in a second. So for power, I am running the uh, three amp hour talent saw. I've been talking about these for a while. Uh, last weekend, I decided just to experiment and do a little hot paint job. I uh, wasn't able to remove the battery pack on the bottom. I didn't want to break it, so I couldn't disassemble and remove uh, the bottom piece here, but uh, it looks pretty cool for the desert. And then I also did a paint job on my True SDX before I decided to uh, take it and run it through its paces. Uh, this is the first time I've ever tried to paint anything, uh, but uh, since everybody thinks I'm a LARPer, why not go full LARP retard and uh, go ahead and uh, Gucci this thing out. Uh, since I am a field operator, I decided to put uh, silicone covers I had on hand from my Raspberry Pi days so that uh, there's very minimal points of ingress here, and then this is where we're going to connect up the cable. And you can't beat this for the size, so this is the utility that um, comes with basically compromising what would normally be my 818 but it was just too big for the trip and having it in a nice small package like this and then I think I showed this before but uh, the audio interface is a little rough so I'm actually using the uh, Airfly and then I pair this with my Bluetooth uh, earbuds and this is just if I want to go ahead and monitor because the speaker is very rough when you're doing a single sideband voice. I've got two uh, cables here. Uh, this is the factory cable, but I did put on power poles so that I can mate it with my normal batteries. And then on Amazon, I found this guy. And the cool thing about this is that I can connect it up to the uh, talent cell here. And I think this is a 1.3 millimeter connector. 
and uh, I'll try to find the eBay link where I bought it but they're uh, really quite cool because this is now your your total package here and then power on that bad boy all right guys sorry about the wind noise I'm out in the field uh, decided to uh, go out with the boys we're waiting to get on post at Redstone Arsenal took my ultralight gear we're in the parking lot here is a uh, end fed halfway for 40 meters very low to the ground sent out a heartbeat and uh, one of my buddies that i actually work with william in tennessee got back to me and uh, this is what we're running with first tim's end fed half wave and then i've got about 25 feet of rg316 and it looks like we got an acknowledgement but um, anyways uh did not check any baggage this area here on red i sent off a message to my buddy william in tennessee and uh, basically left a inbox message for my buddy Mike, Kilo Charlie 8, Oscar Whiskey Lima, who is in uh, Henderson, Nevada. And uh, so he should be able to check for messages calling all call. And basically all I put here was um, message to KCAOWL at Redstone Arsenal. And uh, super modest, this is the first time, actually the second time I've used the true SDX running five watts going into the three amp hour talent cell and then going into the Panasonic FZM1 and then I'm using the uh, DigiRig light. Looking forward to hook up with Dennis on this trip. And uh, not doing any cat control, so I manually tuned uh, the radio here. But uh, all my gear fits in my little uh, FZM1 pouch that I custom designed and my antenna bag. All right, folks, took a little bit of a break to go help uh, Armor Lock set up. I'm traveling with them, so let's just take a sneak peek while we're doing this. So we've got all of the uh, the ICOM here with the TPA pack frames, a bunch of different Yesus. I mean, take a look at this freaking piece of art there. It looks beautiful. Got the old man packs. I didn't bring mine because I'm traveling, so uh, you guys are probably familiar with some of these uh, setups here. Some new configurations which are kind of cool if you're a 705 user actually uh, was donated or 705 was donated to me so i'm actually looking forward to it uh, when i get back uh, to play with this setup and the uh, the battery uh, mount there all right guys uh really just want to play radio but thought i'd give you a quick behind the scenes tour uh, we're going to be next to the icon booth that hasn't set up yet but uh really excited here to play radio with uh with the boys all right, guys, it's uh, 0600 local time out here, about 1100 UTC. Uh, I was supposed to hit a combo window about ooh, 11 minutes ago. But uh, anyway, it's a little bit behind. I'm going to try to set up outside of the embassy suites, and we'll see if we can do 5 watts and uh, hit Arizona from here. Actually, no, Nevada. No coffee this morning. So I'm not too optimistic about making this uh, long haul back to uh, the southwest, but uh, we do have some trees. Don't have anything to deploy it up in terms of the mask. Got a little bit of paracord. Uh, we're going to try to go real easy on this one. Just uh, load the ground sloper like we did the other day. It took about six minutes to set up. Same configuration as last time. Got the pack out there where the matching unit is for the infed, and then going out to the tree in the distance. Again, very low to the ground. I uh, wish I brought my mask that I bought yesterday. I bought a replacement for my Soda Beams Carbon 6. We'll talk about that later. Powered up my rig here again, True SDX, going into the FZM1 here. So, one thing I realized, I knew this was going to be the case, operating in a new operating environment would pose some challenges. And actually, uh, I'm not used to dealing with uh, condensation in the morning, so very different than the uh, dry desert environment. So, uh, it was actually kind of interesting trying to do a little bit of the, uh, the touch screen here. There's, I don't know if it'll come on camera but there's a lot of moisture already kind of like building up so it's actually kind of nice that I've got IP55 rated devices in the form of this tough pad here so I just sent out a heartbeat and uh, we'll see who's coming back to me uh, the boa cat prediction says I should be able to make it out to uh, the southwest area but again I'm not in the perfect deployment I wish I had a lot more height uh, I just don't feel like throwing up the paracord, guys. I might try again tomorrow from, from Tennessee. i uh, got a bunch of stations coming back to me here. I'm going to just try to plot them on the map. Oh, we got Las Vegas. Hold on a second here. Uh, so 
my software is still showing me where I'm at home. I want to talk to this guy in Las Vegas right there. That's exactly uh, my buddy Mike, who is my target contact. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're obviously propagating into the area that I'm in right now. I am in Alabama, so you can see all those little pins. And guys, this is 100% offline. And uh, that is my buddy Mike. All right, so this is really badass stuff. So what I was doing on the plane was offline VOA cap analysis. We'll talk about this later, but let me go ahead and see if I can pause the camera, craft a message. But dude, we freaking did it. Okay, hold on a second. I want a message. So here's the situation. I can hear Mike, but he can't hear me. Uh, he seems to be on the air, so he's actually using another station to do a real-time relay. It actually just popped up on the screen here from Whiskey Zero Bravo Yankee Uniform. Again, this is my buddy Mike, and... Uh, I'm not going to open up the, the flag here, but you can see he's saying good morning uh, via relay out DE KCA OWL. And uh, my station is sending an acknowledgement back to that intermediate station. It should be going back to Mike. So I'm going to try to do a relay using that guy. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's the best we can do, but uh, we're fully off grid here. Are you video? Yeah, I'm on video. All right. We got people wrecking my video. It's okay. It's all fun. It's what it's about. All right, guys, so I said it before, uh, if you're expecting to be a rock star ninja, especially when you're away from your uh, normal equipment out in the field, especially in a new location, it's an eye-opener. This is actually a bit more difficult than uh, it usually is for me. Uh, we're gonna try to use one more technique. Uh, my buddy William apparently can hear me. I think he can hear Mike. I haven't asked via JSA call uh, who his herd stations are just because I'm running low on resources here. But I'm attempting a, uh, a relay, so right here on the screen, I basically uh, sent a message to KI4HDU out in Tennessee. I'm directing it to my buddy Mike in Henderson, and my message is short, okay, period, at hotel in AL for Alabama. So if this works, I should see some uh, signal on the frequency that I'm sitting on here. Oh, we're doing it, guys. Gotta stop running my mouth. So uh, this area in red here, shows that he's acknowledging uh the problem is that he's over to the right on the waterfall and i can barely see that just because of the size of this display here so the fact that my buddy william just has acknowledged to accept my relay what's going to happen now is for about 45 seconds maybe a minute and a half he's going to retransmit that message on my behalf to henderson then Henderson's gonna have to reply in real time if they see the message. William will have to station, will have to hear it, and then he'll rant or retransmit it on my end. So that whole round trip uh, could take several minutes. So uh, this is a very different style of, of communication. All right guys, so this morning we had a little bit of a fiasco trying to do some 40 meter uh, getting into Arizona. So I'm gonna coordinate with my buddy offline. We're gonna use Winlink today with Wode and we're just gonna hit a local um, Woodlink Gateway out on Monsanto. So basically we're gonna coordinate for tomorrow and uh, long story short, we're gonna use a new frequency. We're gonna be on a, a different offset for our uh, JS8 and uh, hopefully he'll get this tonight and tomorrow morning when I go hit my window at 1100 UTC, we'll be good to go. We're heading back to uh, Tennessee and I've never experienced a Bucky's. This place is wild. More impressive in uh, person, especially with the 100 pumps out front. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Morning guys, it's about 11.55 UTC, I'm out here in Tennessee, and I'm trying to establish communication with the Southwest. Last night at the ham fest, or yesterday during the ham fest, I decided to uh, leave a new lightweight communications plan for today with my training partner in the Southwest. I don't think I was successful, but the gear is working. Again, I have a very modest deployment out here. Uh, not used to this kind of terrain. The setup is what you guys have seen before. And uh, a couple things. I was getting stomped on uh, yesterday by other people uh, trying to ask me for signal to noise ratio reports and doing other things while they're watching me actively trying to establish a connection. Um, it may just be a a naive mistake or maybe they just don't care uh, but this is something that's likely to happen if stuff goes sideways uh, the idea that either intentionally or unintentionally causing interference with the activities you're trying to carry out so even though i was able to do uh, hf off-grid communication there were people impacting my ability to accomplish the communication task at hand 
So with the comps plan, I decided to pick a different digital frequency and then coordinate that via a Winlink email via the, the handheld yesterday. Uh, today, I decided on that frequency, manually tuned the, uh, the QDX. And uh, everything worked today in terms of timing and uh, definitely getting out there and being heard. Uh, there are two stations when I asked for a uh, signal to noise ratio report uh, for our call group at TTP and two stations came back to me and then I was curious to kind of understand where they're actually who they can hear so I used a feature in JSA call I don't know if I really talked about before called hearing and you can ask the operators that you can hear who they can hear you can kind of build this uh, poor man's uh, off-grid distributed network and you can actually route messages through the ones you can hear and uh, do all that so kind of cool uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing the operator I want to uh, talk to through these two stations that I can hear. Um, I'm a little bit late in my comma window, uh, not more than like 30 minutes, and I actually asked the other station to leave theirs on. So again, I'm trying to do this in such a way where we have no mode of communication over the cell network. So try to establish that communication plan via WinLink email. Uh, we could establish that over HF or some other mode, and then coordinate for a window today. So I don't know if maybe he can hear me, I can't hear him, maybe he did not get that message. But anyways, um, for this travel video, I'm gonna say this was a partial success, uh, but mostly in the fact that the true SDX for a very lightweight, very inexpensive travel uh, HF kit, uh, if you don't need a whole lot of HF bands, don't need a whole lot of power, which we don't for modes like GS8, um, it's probably going to be part of my kit until I have a catastrophic failure. But for that footprint, that size, that utility, I think it's actually going to be uh, something to slot in. When I get back home, obviously, I'm going to use my 818ND and my uh, more robust hardware. But if you are absolutely on the go and only have uh, a fistfuls, couple of fistfuls of room for your gear it's the way to go all right guys so i'm sitting out here and it occurred to me that now that i'm back on the watering hole frequency for js8 i could actually use my buddy william uh, who does know my training partner mike and mike knows uh, the my wife that i actually want to leave a message for so we don't have um cell phone access out here so i just want her to know that i'm okay and i don't have my phone so i'm leaving him a message now now that i know the path uh, within the state of tennessee to him and i basically put please send an email to KCAOWL, which you can look up on QRZ. Uh, basically look them up for me and relay uh, India 1, okay, no phone. So point is here, I just took a moment to pause. I said, you know what, while I can't do a direct path, even though it would have been cool to uh, test out my VOACAP uh, prediction scripts that I've been working on, uh, the goal is still to communicate. Maybe I can't do the direct path, but we've got this intermediate system, and now I can actually ask for or task another operator when he sees my message to relay some information. It doesn't have to be over radio. Uh, William and my buddy Mike have the internet available, cell phone, few other techniques. So ultimately, I have a feeling that this is going to go from myself in Tennessee to William in Tennessee to William to my buddy Mike in uh, Henderson, probably over email, over email, and then Mike will text my wife. So it's a kind of a roundabout way of keeping in contact, but I'm using all the tools I have in my toolbox. All right, guys, I'm not sure how this video is gonna cut together. Apologies for the delay. I actually came out here to uh, my first ham fest, if you can believe that. I uh, went to Huntsville, met a lot of great people. Uh, actually hooked up with the other YouTubers. It was kind of fun meeting them in person and a lot of supporters on uh, Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, so Padre, James, I don't want to miss anybody, but Andrew, the, the whole crew out there, you guys were amazing. So thanks for the support. All right, guys, I'm going to pack this stuff up. Uh, I actually have, uh, I'm not homeless. I have, uh, I'm hanging out with a buddy that I've wanted to meet up with in a few years. And so I want to get basically everything packed up and uh, kind of, don't cause too much of a disturbance this morning while I'm already sleeping. Uh, chickens have been good though. But anyways, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.